<laughs> Welcome to our colloquium. I'm very, very glad to uh, introduce uh, Felicitas Paus. Uh, she is full professor at ETH Zurich and has a very interesting position at CERN in Geneva. Felicitas Paus um, graduated and made a PhD in theoretical physics in Graz, uh, changed to a Max Planck Institute, later went into uh, particle physics and uh, joined ETH, I think, something like 15 years ago. Yeah. Uh, became full professor and makes a very good link uh, between particle physics in the direction of uh, astrophysics and will tell us about very interesting things in uh, the knowledge, concerning the knowledge of where do we come from. So what is uh, evolution of uh, universe, uh, space, time, uh, matter. So we are very uh, keen to uh, acknowledge that you took your time to come here and present us uh, that introduction. And there are even some links to work you did with uh, EMPA, which you will uh, show here. Please. Thank yeah. you very much uh, for the kind introduction, also for the invitation. It's really a very great pleasure for me to be here today and talk to you about the Large Hadron Collider. As you must have heard in the past, we are entering, we are going to be soon entering a new era in unraveling the mystery of matter, space and time. And this is exactly what I would like to talk to you today about. Just for uh, completeness, what you see here, an area view of the CERN area. You see here the Lake of Geneva, the airport, so downtown Geneva is here. And here you have the CERN building, so Lab 1, and shown here is this famous 27 kilometer circumference tunnel, which is about 100 meter underground. And also CERN, as you know, is, a, is the European Laboratory for Particle Physics. However, its name uh, is kept when it was conceived, 1954. Namely, at that time it was called Conseil Européen pour la Recherche Nucléaire. And uh, so this title had to be kept, even though we are not doing nuclear physics at CERN, we're doing particle physics. So as I already mentioned, CERN was founded in 1954. At that time, it was, there were 12 European member states, and Switzerland is a host state of CERN. It is located between Switzerland and the French border. Today, we have 20 European member states, and you see here all the flags. Since December last year, there is one candidate uh, for accession to become member in the future, and this is Romania. And then there are also eight observers to CERN. So countries like the United States, Japan, India, Russia, Israel, and Turkey, and then also the uh, EU and UNESCO, because UNESCO was basically the umbrella under which CERN was founded. So today, CERN is really the world's largest particle physics laboratory. We have about almost 10,000 scientists from about 60 countries all over the world using the large infrastructures at CERN. And here I show you, just uh, for curiosity, the distribution of uh, users. So users, someone like me, also using with my group uh, the infrastructure at CERN, the accelerators, statistics just a couple of weeks ago. So you can see almost 6,000 come from the CERN member states. There are close to 3,000 from the observer states and from the rest. And you see many, many different countries in the color code of uh, red are other states, work, uh, scientists working from those states at CERN. So you can see for the time being from Switzerland, we are 332 uh, scientists, engineers, uh, using a CERN infrastructure. So the question is now, what do we do at CERN? What are our, our physics goals in particle physics? So what we want to do is we really want to study the structure of our universe at its most fundamental level. That means we would like to explore the basic physics laws which govern the fundamental building blocks of matter, and we would like to explore also the structure of space-time. So to study the building blocks of matter and the interactions, uh, forces which uh, interact between them, one has to understand what type of dimensions we are using 
in order or, or we are studying in order to also understand what type of instruments we need. And to explain this, I have drawn for you here a particular ruler where I have dimensions from the time of the Big Bang all the way to the size of our today's visible universe. So you can see in physics we can go to very large and very small and extremely small dimensions. And it happens so that we, in first order of magnitude, are in the center of this ruler, so center of the universe. And I think it's most appropriate to put your director here in the center of my ruler. So if I'm going to go to large uh, dimensions, uh, when you want to study galaxies, galaxy formation, cluster of galaxies, you need very powerful telescopes, which you either put somewhere on, on Earth, uh, like oop, on Earth, or you put it uh, in space, like the Hubble Space Telescope. On the other side, when you want to study uh, small dimensions, like a virus, which is a 10,000 of a centimeter, you need already a very powerful, nice um, microscope. But if you want to study dimensions which are 10, 100,000 times smaller than the proton, which is in the atom, uh, you need really super microscope. And these are exactly our colliders, our accelerators. And the LHC is really the most powerful super microscope we have ever constructed uh, in science. So when you go now from the size of our universe today, Going back, you go to smaller and smaller dimensions. What you can see also, the smaller dimensions you study, the closer you come to the conditions at the very beginning, at the very first moment after the Big Bang. And this is basic, uh, uh, before I do this, maybe I should show you still uh, in these dimensions here from Louis to 10 to the minus 16 centimeter, if you take uh, the finger, if you take your finger and you have powerful microscopes, what you first see is a molecule, then atom, then you see that the atom consists of a nuclear and electron, the nucleus consists out of protons and neutrons, and finally, since middle of the 1960s, we know that we basically all exist or built out of quarks, so-called up and down quarks, which are the constituents of protons and neutrons. 